there's a mystical energy that flows through the veins of this city. Its heart beating to the rhythm of a land far but not forgotten. In this magical place, the rolling tides of history have carved out a unique culture where the traditions of yesterday may be the key to unlocking its potential tomorrow. Salvador Bahia is more than a destination. It's a way of life. In the colonial neighborhood of Pelarinho, I meet up with one of Salvador's leading voices on Afro-Brazilian culture. And he tells me all about this awe-inspiring neighborhood that UNESCO has designated a World Heritage Site. We are here at Pelourinho, the, at the historical center of Salvador Bahia, the cultural capital of Brazil. It's a very vibrant place now, uh, with a lot of arts and culture. So that's actually the center of Salvador and the heart of Brazil. Paulo Rogério is an entrepreneur and social activist who specializes in the inclusion and economic empowerment of the nearly 100 million African descendants here in Brazil. In my city, particularly Salvador, is 84% Afro-descendants. 84%? 84%. It's a vast majority. Yeah, the vast majority. is a culture that people come from all over the world, from nowhere, from China, to see the Afro-culture here. The Afro-culture is more prominent here than in any other part of Brazil, and in all walks of life. From Capoeiro to Candomblé, and even Carnival. It all started in Salvador, and it vigorously maintains its ties to its African heritage. But particularly the African component of the culture is really vibrant and in your face. So to see it for myself, I head to the Rio Vimilio neighborhood to take part in a uniquely Afro-Brazilian cultural phenomenon. Students at Capoeira Regional have come here to learn and play in this mystical martial art. They swing, roll, and sweat to the rhythms of the drum, and in doing so, finding a deeper connection to their past. And I've come to do the same. Capoeira looks more like a dance than a fighting style. Rhythmic movements distract the eye from its true purpose. One of the students here tells me that was the intention. Capoeira is our ancestors' fight. It was disguised as a dance, so you have music, you have percussion, but it's a fight. It was used so that uh, uh, um, Afro-Brazilians, slaves, could, be, could fight the slave owners. So that's the experience that it brings to us. Nowadays, uh, capoeira here in Brazil is even taught at a university. You will see everywhere young people, little kids, young adults and adults and elderly people enjoying and playing, dancing and fighting at the same time. I even try my hand in the ring, with the master of the school no less. But it doesn't take me long to realize that as easy as they make it look, well, it ain't so easy. I usually think that I can pretty much do anything, get in there one time, look at it and do it. This is not one of those times. Very complex movements. I mean, you're, you're up, you're down, you're side to side, and you have to put it in rhythm as well. It's, it's not something you just go and just do. It has to be a fluid motion. Capoeiro in Salvador is a link to the past that can't be severed by a changing future. It's more than a lifestyle. It's a, a life philosophy. After working up an appetite, Bruno takes me to one of the hidden gems of Salvador, an off-the-radar eatery with a very specific angle. I've come out to eat with my World Citizen Crew family. Yeah. And we've come to Ajum de Diaspora, which is a restaurant dedicated to the Afro-Brazilian cuisine here in Salvador. And from what I'm told, it's one of the best restaurants in town. Angelica Moreira is a world-renowned chef and just happens to be the aunt of my friend Bruno. She's also the brainchild behind Ajum de Diaspora. But she's really more of a motherly figure to the folks that come here. She serves traditional Afro-Brazilian meals with a high-end flair. O prato aqui hoje que vocês irão comer é o tutu quilombola. Tutu quilombola is a regional dish that was originally made by African slaves. But here, Angelica adds her special touch. It has sausage, pork, eggs, and collard greens, very similar to some of our own African American soul food. This might be the best meal I've had in Brazil so far. And filling up will give me the energy I need to see the rest of this amazing country. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Well, what a, what a spoil of riches this week has been. What's next tomorrow? Well, we're, we're going to stay in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to take a look at a different side of Brazil. You know, today we're talking about uh, some of the culture, the Afro-Brazilian connection. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow we're going to get a little, a little bit into the paradise of Brazil. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. The beach, maybe? We're going to go to the beach, okay. and, and we're going to go to the beach. The beach. The beach. Is that in Panema? Uh, it's I should hold it as a surprise, <laughs> okay. but spoiler, Porto de Bada. Porto de Bada, all right, very nice. Wow, sounds like heaven. Looks